Why, hello, ladies and gentlemen. On today's show, the Padres take the first game against those silly Philly, the Philadelphia Sillies. They should really be called, ladies and gentlemen. Behind Mike Clevenger's start, Mackenzie Gore making his first relief appearance. Some clutch hitting, as always. You know what you're paying attention to, guys. You know what podcast it is. Let's get to it. You are locked on Padres. Your daily San Diego Padres podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of the Lockdown Padres Podcast, which is part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day for Tuesday, May 18th. As always, I am your host with sometimes, occasionally, but certainly not always the most, Javier Reyes. You might be familiar with some of my baseball-related work over at Just Baseball, or you might be familiar with me being a goofball over on Twitter at Javapeno, J-A-V-I-I-P-E-N-O. Go follow on there and at LO underscore Padres for all the Padres-centric tweets and such. And if you want to see my ugly mug, you can check me out at Lockdown Padres on YouTube. And thank you for making Lockdown Padres your first listen. Ladies and gentlemen, yet again, just, I I will say this. I will say this. Today's episode, we're going to be talking between the Padres and the Phillies. But I will say this. I don't, the Padres have literally played like a top six, and I've spent a lot of time kind of critiquing and kind of, you know, uh, co- I don't want to say complaining, but very much ripping to shreds the bad parts about the team, right? I've been making fun of the bullpen. I've been bringing up how Manaya gets hit really hard sometimes and how I think Luis Campizano should be called up. The reality is, is that the Padres have a really good record, 23 and 13. Um, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see here. Uh-huh. I'm checking the MLB standings. If I'm not mistaken, Um, they are tied or a half game back of the Los Angeles Dodgers currently who are being gifted a series against the Arizona Diamondbacks. Not really. I'm not going to say gifted. D-backs aren't haven't been atrocious so far. I will say that much. Shout out Miller Thomas, a lot of Diamondbacks. But anyway, um, I feel like I've been really, really negative about the team sometimes. And I think deservedly so. I think it is ridiculous to fan if you critique a team or a player. But nonetheless... This is a really nice example of just the Padres are able to pull out wins sometimes, even if they weren't necessarily balling out, looking like an incredible team, right? Let's first start off this episode by talking about Mike Clevenger, who made his start against the Phillies, and he's had three starts so far, if I'm not mistaken, how many starts he's had three starts so far. And this one, from a sheer standpoint of just the baseline stats, he was pretty incredible. Five innings, no runs, only one hit allowed, no walks, and five Ks. Uh, that brought his ERA down from five to 3.21. Now, granted, his five ERA, let's be clear, that's an aggregate and whatnot, and that's because he'd only gone uh, four innings in his first two starts. Uh, he hadn't gone more than four and two-thirds in his first two starts against Cleveland and the Chicago Cubs. And this one, while some of the other tasks I usually bring up, some of the most basic things, whips-wise, he only had three whips total, uh, three of them coming from his slider this entire game. So part of me is saying he, I mean, it's just so hard to evaluate a guy who's coming off of his second Tommy John surgery. You kind of take what you can get, right? I thought he looked confident. I thought he was located really well. It's evidenced by the zero walks. That much I will say. He wasn't getting batters on this really dynamic Philadelphia offense to necessarily swing at stuff outside the zone, to necessarily look look silly and it didn't necessarily look like they were they just couldn't make the best of contact and while you know the ex- exit velocity numbers on on clevenger they did hit him hard at points bottom line is that it's just he's working his way back and i've said on earlier episodes that i think clevenger hopefully uh until the all-star break it's just going to be a work back thing he's just going to try and work himself back into being what he was before and then maybe we might see a little bit more down the line, the all-star level Clevenger that he was basically right at, the, at the time that the Padres shot him. A guy who, among starting pitchers, had one of the lowest ERAs in all of baseball, right? Up there with the Justin Verlander types. And Justin Verlander has been making his uh, return to baseball this year, and he's looked incredible too, right? He's definitely, Clevenger hasn't had that level of an impact. 
But what I like to see is just a guy going out there and getting progressively better. The criticism I will say is this, is that the Phillies had a really great series against the Dodgers. And the Dodgers, by ERA standards and by XFIP and all that sort of stuff, you know, field independent pitching, all the, the kind of stats kind of at the top of the leaderboard in starting pitching, even though it doesn't feel like it, even though they've had a lot of guys who have had incredible performances and then some really bad ones, right? Like Julio, Julio Urias gets lit up this weekend. Uh, Walker Bueller hasn't really been worthy so far to start the year. We'll see if he turns it up. He usually starts off a little bit slow, but nonetheless, it is, so it'd be surprised to you if the, the Dodgers have kind of like one of the best ERAs based on what we've seen so far this year, not based on projections and whatnot. Um, but the Padres have just, they've rarely had a starter go out. I honestly can only think of one, and that was the start with Yu Darvish against the San Francisco Giants, in which arose the unwritten rules discussion and all that stuff when they got clobbered, right? Where he only lasted, what was it, one and two-thirds innings? From that perspective, it's the Padres haven't really had a starting pitcher, and Nick Martinez is the only one, really, who has gone out there and given up five runs, and you're like, oh, man, yeah, this game might be might be a loss. But the way I view that is Martinez. I'm not necessarily looking for that guy to be the dynamic, unbelievable guy. He's the fifth guy in the rotation. And as a fifth guy, his changeup, guys. Batters are hitting below 100 to, to Nick Martinez's changeup, which reminds me of a little Chris Paddock. Remember Chris Paddock's changeup back in 2019? Very similar in terms of just the overall uh, effectiveness hitters are having against it. So at least um, Nick Martinez, I'm sorry, has had that level. Right. He's just had this is all basically to say is that the Padres pitching is so, so good. Um, the only thing that I will say is maybe the criticism is, like I said, the hard hit stuff, average exit velocity or the highest, I should say, at 106.7, which wasn't great. 96.3 Velo, all that stuff off of Clevenger, only three whiffs and all three coming from his slider. Nothing from his fastball, nothing from the cutter, nothing from sinker, nothing from change up and uh, curveball, albeit those pitches not thrown as much as the first two. Um that maybe Philly had been performing so well against the Dodgers this weekend that they were just due for a stinker, that they were due for a game in which they have a type of lineup that it wouldn't surprise you if they have multiple guys that strike out with Castellanos, with Schwarber, with Harper, to be honest with you, and with a couple other guys like 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 Alec Bohm and, and such. It wouldn't surprise you if they just have one of those games where they're just not hitting. They used up all the offense against the Dodgers, right? Bottom line, though, is that it – it's still paid dividends for the Padres. And they I think that Clevenger has performed really admirably so far for a guy that's coming off of his second surgery. And I think that the Padres are absolutely love to have him. Um, my only thing is hopefully he can keep down the hard hit stuff. Hopefully he can, can generate more whiffs. Hopefully he can go deeper into games. But for now, I'm, I like what I see. And I like that maybe down the road when he ramps up, he can be that really awesome, like second leg, anchor guy who takes the Padres over the finish line towards the end of the year and potentially is like the third best guy in the rotation. If, if not even maybe even better sometimes, right. With maybe the number one being not, maybe the number one being Joe Musgrove and Clevenger being great too. I could see that down the stretch so far. He is showing you that he is building back to being my Clevenger. And that's really good news for the Padres before we move on, before we move on and talk about another pitcher who was, uh, pitching this past night, and then also about the weirdness of Philadelphia Phillies. Before we get into that, guys, let me tell you about something that is also, you know, new. You know, which is eh, this is not my best transition. I'm a little tired, guys. Sorry about that. Uh, let's talk about Built Bar. <laughs> Built Bar is something I've been talking about forever. They are fantastic, the best protein bars on the planet, and they've got their new birthday cake puff flavors. If you guys know, uh, Almond Joy, you know how they have the big Almond Joys and then they have the Mounds? Mounds are like kind of like Built Bar's version of that, except they're also very good and they're a little bit more, not coconutty, but they're like marshmallowy. And birthday cake flavor is like the perfect combination. They got the sprinkles and all that. They sent them to me and I gobble, 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 gobble them <laughs> so much. They were so good, man. That white chocolate type of icing vibe and whatnot, it's just, it hits different, man. It just hits different. Um, and you guys can go check out, check those out too. Check out the macros as well on these things with 150 calories, seven, 16 grams of protein, and only 9 grams of sugar. This limited time flavor is an amazing option if you are looking for a healthy way to get flavor and variety in your day. Guys, go to Built.com and use promo code LOCKED15 and you'll get 15% off your order. That is promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built. 
com. All right, everybody. Hmm. Of course, just to remind you, thank you for making Lockdown Pod. It is your hashtag first listen every day. We are free and available forms. Sorry about that clap. Let's talk about Mackenzie Gore. All right, Mackenzie Gore, it was announced um, last, what was it, over the weekend? Maybe it was. I think it was actually announced like last week that he wasn't going to make a start against Philadelphia, that they wanted to give him some rest potentially and maybe use him in a future series and instead have him come out of the bullpen. And they confirmed earlier yesterday, uh, can I get my time right, uh, earlier yesterday that he would be appearing out of the bullpen to back up Mike Clevenger, which I think is great and I think is I I think there's two things, actually. First, let's talk about the good, and then we'll talk about the bad. The good is that Mackenzie Gore was great. He generated only five whiffs, but even still, that fastball rides, man. And he locates it great. There was one against, I believe it was Schwarber. The strikeouts that he did get in this game, on the slider and on the fastball, were just, I mean... The slider makes people look silly. The movement on that slider is absolutely nasty. Even if it doesn't have quite the bite to it, it still does have a crazy amount of movement. And it's such an off-speed sort of thing for batters who are used to seeing this 96, you know, 95, 96 mile per hour fastball ride up on them. That he just kind of he executes really well. And I think that that's what's really been most impressive about uh Mackenzie Gore so far is that he is showing a lot of control. And that's a lot of things that were worrying people when he was down in the minors, right? He was walking so many batters, losing all the control. It was more than just giving up runs. It was that he was losing control, right? And in this game, he was great. Three innings, no earned runs, no walks, three hits, four strikeouts. He looked awesome. Awesome. Dare I say, maybe his second, the second best he's looked, I would actually say, including his starts. I know he had 10 Ks against the Cincinnati Reds not too long ago, over five innings. But that's also the Reds, and we all know how the Reds are. But I dare I say he looked the most dominant in this start, considering that the Philadelphia Phillies are the type of team that could take you deep on any pitch with that crazy lineup they've got there, with MVP Bryce Harper, right? Like, they really can hit you. And even guys like Gene Segura and JT Riomuta, right? Like, that. I really think this is one of the more impressive moments. The strikeouts that he got on the slider and the location in the bottom left corner. Hold on. Out and away. That's what it is. Out and low and away. There we go. Low and away on the zone with the fastball just shows an expert command, right? And I mentioned a while ago in its run value that Mackenzie Gore's fastball is the second best pitch by run value, or I'm sorry, I think it's the first best pitch by run value across any pitch that any Padre, uh, relievers included, have been throwing this year. That's awesome, right? Like, that's absolutely awesome. I don't know if it changed a little bit over the past couple starts and appearances and whatnot, but... He's been great, and I love to see it. The good news here is that I think that if there was a time to have Mackenzie Gore come out of the bullpen, it is great to use him as a combo with Mike Clevenger, who we don't know exactly with the health. With him just coming back, you kind of have him on a little bit of a limit. Even if he was looking fairly dominant, 75 pitches, yeah, that's not a lot of him out. So they figured, well, let's bring in Gore and have him come out and maybe do three innings. Right. And it's basically this kind of combo thing that they have going here. And I love it. And especially with Blake Snell coming back tomorrow, maybe you do that with Nick Martinez. Maybe you do Gore with Blake Snell sometimes because Blake Snell also has some issues with aside from just the the, why he's been out so far, but also just with his inefficiency. He's a guy who last year, even when he was good, threw a lot of pitches, man. A lot of batters would be fouling stuff off even when he was on fire and striking guys out. He labors through games sometimes. So having Mackenzie Gore or a Nick Martinez is, in my opinion, a really great asset for the Padres, especially considering that their bullpen has been so weak so far. Um, so I love that. I love that. The bad side of this is that it is, is it possible that maybe you could, a, a cynic, a cynic could be looking at this and saying, wow, the Padres really are down bad when it comes to their their bullpen, right? I think that that's not necessarily fair. If you have this um, unbelievable depth of starting pitching that only comes around like once in a blue moon. I mean, there's, there's a reason why and rotation become a discourse thing, not a discourse thing, a topic of conversation because it doesn't happen very often. Right. And it's for sometimes good reason. If you have a six man rotation, it means that the top guys in your staff don't make as many starts. Right. So there is a negative and a positive, but in this case with the Padres, I like it. I think that, yes, you could be a cynic and say, poor roster construction. How do you have eight starting pitchers that are great, but then your bullpen is like one of the worst in the majors? That's a fair criticism. 
But the other thing is, as I mentioned on the episode, uh, what was it, yesterday? I forgot when I mentioned this. On Friday? When did I mention this? I don't think I mentioned it at all recently, is that the Padres have a lot of injuries with their bullpen. So having Mackenzie Gore be such a great uh, debut for the Padres this year uh, is so big considering that Tim Hill, Pierce Johnson, Drew Pomeranz, uh, Austin Adams, right? Like all these guys are hurt. Really good to have Mackenzie Gore come out of the bullpen. That's an unbelievable asset and allows you to shut out the Phillies. Three nothing. Um, and I guess, yeah, and then Taylor Rogers comes in as usual. Taylor Rogers, I think, is on pace for about 87 saves uh, this year. He already has 14, if I'm not mistaken. He almost blew it against the Cubs. I will say that. My man Taylor, my man Taylor Rogers, you almost blew it against the um against the Cubs, if not for the fact that clearly the dead end ball didn't help Frank Schwindel flying out to left. Uh, clearly, in my opinion, like that was a grand slam way to happen. But nonetheless, 0.56 ERA on the year. And if I'm not mistaken, let's see here, two walks to 17 strikeouts. Uh, he's been elite. He's been elite. Him along with Josh Hader and Edwin Diaz, Puerto Rican, New York Mets, uh, maybe or all this Chapman too of the New York Yankees, even if he's you know not quite in his ultra prime right now. Like four closers. I actually was listening to the Just Baseball show, full disclosure. I contribute to that website where they were talking about there aren't many closers where it's like it feels like it's game over when they come into the game. Taylor Rogers is kind of in that realm right now. And hey, I talked about this before the season that I thought when it came to Melanson and it came to getting a closer. I trusted the Padres to be able to find a way. The Padres, for the last few seasons, every time they've lost some closer or whatever, they find some dominant dude. I don't know what it is, but it was, you know, Kirby Yates coming over and being amazing, right? And being an all star and being the first guy off your board in fantasy drafts, right? His ERA that was like 1.3 or whatever, right? Two seasons of great Kirby Yates. Then Kirby Yates gets hurt, right? After uh, heading into 2020. Drew Pomeranz comes in. He's great. And then you make the trade for Trevor Rosenthal, and he's great. And then 2021, ah, we don't re-sign Trevor Rosenthal. Oh, my gosh, what are we going to do? They bring in Mark Melanson on a dime, and he's amazing too, basically, right? And he's been a mess, by the way, for the D-backs this year. He's been really, really rough for the D-backs this year. So that's my thing. Trust that the Padres seem to be okay at putting together a bullpen. This isn't the Phillies, the team that we just faced. All right, the Phillies for years have been really struggling uh, with bullpen stuff, right? So I love what I'm seeing from the Padres when it comes to their starting pitching. I love that there's just feels like there's a, a, a room to breathe with the fact that their starting pitching is so great. That if they were to make a move, if they were to trade, you know, I also forget to say that Nabil Krismat, by the way, has been awesome for the Padres. He was amazing uh, in the game on, uh, what was it, Sunday? Sunday. Uh, he was amazing. He was amazing. I will say, I will say, that um, I'm almost forgetting that today's Wednesday, uh, that I will say that, um, you know, if the Padres do want to make a deal, if they somehow say, say Snell looks amazing and they say, all right, maybe we deal him, maybe Campuzano, who we for some reason refuse to play. And then you get that really great power bat, maybe great outfielder type of guy. It's not a terrible move. I like that they have a little bit more room to breathe because they've traded so much from their farm system that you're like, oh my God, like this is the room to operate, right? And remember, this is also a team that's getting Fernando Tatis Jr. back, crossing fingers, hopefully at some point to help aid the offense that admittedly struggled a little bit uh, in this game. Uh, definitely struggled a little bit. That's the one negative about the game that we do have to talk about, guys. But before we talk to it, let me talk to you about no negatives. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's right. I got your attention now, didn't I? I'm not a car person, but when it comes to all of your car-related needs, Rock Auto, they have you covered. And most importantly, they help you save they just help you save money, man. I mean, check out their Honda Odyssey fuel pump. It's $216 as compared to $353 from your chain store. That's right. 100% savings, 50, 30, whatever you want. They are helping you out big time. So go check it out. Rely low prices for every customer and they have everything that you could need from brake parts to tail lamps to motor oil and even new carpet um yeah i mean i mean what else do you want me to say and also the the website itself really easy to navigate i mean that's pretty helpful especially for me i really don't know anything about cars but rock auto really has you covered there guys so go to the website right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck 
write Locked On in their How'd You Hear About Us box so they know we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Let's finish talking about this game. It's actually been a while since I've done a one game recap. I'm just realizing, you know what I mean? I usually do like multiple games. I have guests on and whatnot. I don't know. It's just, just kind of fun. Hopefully you guys are enjoying it. And you remember, thank you for making us your first listen. Uh, let's talk about the rest of the game. This was the epitome of the Philadelphia Phillies. And I talked about this in my episode with Connor Thomas over at Lockdown Phillies. Go check him out. He's doing a great job. Although he was, his video, I must say, everybody should go check out. I got like 5,000 views too. People were loving it. His video of just depression after that very widely publicized Mets comeback, right? Here's the thing with the Phillies. On top of the fact that their bullpen can be a little bit weird uh, with Corey Niebel being a little bit uh, and whatnot, they did invest in their bullpen a little bit uh, with guys like, who did they acquire this offseason? Was it Brad Hand? They got Brad Hand. They brought in Jerry's Familia, right? Like, they brought in some guys. But you also saw the other negative about the Philadelphia Phillies, which is their defense, right? Just an, an unbelievable thing here. First of all, Austin Nola. I forgot to bring the Nola hat. My apologies. I put it in the, the thumbnail, so I just totally... Blanked on it, but the thumb, the the Austin Nola, he hits into a fielder's choice, allowing Will Myers to score thanks to his speed, and, and that was in the top of the fifth inning. A pretty boring game, despite how enthusiastic I've been about the team so far. A pretty boring game uh, in a lot of ways uh, for the team, but Will Myers able to run all the way. It was a blooper hit from Robinson Cano, who I dogged in an article over at Just Baseball for how... I, I didn't dog him. I just thought that the move wasn't really all that smart, but he hits a blooper kind of hit. It looks like he makes great contact, but just kind of has a bloop uh, hit that allows Will Myers, thankfully, thanks to his speed, to go all the way to third. And look, I, I know it was a hit and it counts. He has two hits in this game. I just will say it's so clear that my man's gotten old. He's 39. That look, that back in the day is a home run for him. And he bloops it. Don't get me wrong. It still counts. All Thank you getting able to get one run in this game. And then Robinson you know, getting a RBI single later on in the game, along with Trent Grisham hitting a double to right field. Um, by the way, uh, on that Robinson Cano hit, the epitome of the Philadelphia Phillies, Kyle Schwarber making the most, I mean, what's the word? Routine? Uh, trying to field the ball in the outfield. It goes right under his glove, all almost back all the way to the warning track, allowing What's his face? It's Will Myers to score. Uh, I mean, that's the epitome of the Phillies, right? The epitome of the Phillies is that they are a team with, hopefully, four okay starters. Uh, probably with Aaron Nola, he has the highest upside with his pitch mix, which we talked about in the crossover. You've got Ranger Suarez, right, who's been pretty good for them lately. And Zach Wheeler, who's probably the best out of the bunch, assuming he's healthy. And then Zach Eflin, who, by the way, for the Phillies in this game, uh, I didn't mention, I think he looks pretty damn good. Uh, he gets the, he gets stuck with the loss in this game, but six innings, one earned run on five hits, zero walks, five Ks. The only earned run, if I'm not mistaken here, ladies and gentlemen, comes from the guy that I have dogged more than almost anybody, uh, basically. Or no, the only the earned run came off the fielder's choice. Next run, uh, that was a non-error, you know, just straight up RBI, was from Trent Grisham, who gets a double in this game. Grisham, uh, multiple doubles in his past few outings, if I'm not mistaken. He has four. Hold on one second. Let me see if I can find this. Uh, over his last four games, he has a double in three out of his last four games, including a uh, an RB, a three-run double that he had at one point. That was against the Atlanta Braves. Um, so that's cool. Hitting for some power, getting that extra base hits type of stuff up. Hopefully he can improve. I have been really mean about him. I put out a tweet yesterday talking about Eric Lauer, which I'm not going to relitigate that right now. I'd rather save that discussion maybe later on when more of a sample size happens even more. Um, and just to save it all as one episode talking about the Trent Grisham trade and why I think it's so problematic. Um, but I will say that Grisham, he's been hitting the ball a little bit better lately. I just hate that it's Walker strikeout with him lately. Um, I know he has a good eye at the plate, but he needs to stop striking so much. Um, in this game, he does not strike out, but nonetheless, been a little looking a little Joey Gallo with his type of play approach in the sense that it's either walk, strike out, or a double 
apparently with him. And he also plays good defense, similar to Gallo, except he's a center fielder. So love to see that from Grisham and love to see the Padres hold the lead in this one. And that's kind of it. Manny Machado had a point. Uh, he kind of loses the bat at one point because he knew he should have drove in uh, a couple guys at one point in the game. He pops out instead. Machado, if I'm not mistaken, over his past few games, slight. Yeah, he has one hit over his last four games. It is. So that's one of. Hold on. Or he actually he pinch hit against Atlanta. So one hit out of his last three. Let's not call the the Atlanta game a full game. And then before that, he's been great. So the the most tiny of slumps for Manny Machado. And I think that, again, a game against the Philadelphia Phillies with the aforementioned defensive miscues and problems with the fact that they're starting pitching sometimes and bullpen can get lit up a little bit, not worried about it whatsoever. He's probably going to hit a home run this series, if I have to, if I have to be honest with you. Um, the guy who must not be named, one for four in the game. Uh, but Cano, Will Myers, just small ball stuff, kind of winning it for the Padres. And you know what? A win is a win, especially early on when you don't have Tatis. I love it. I love it. There was something about this win that felt really good because the Phillies, they're not – and I know that their record doesn't show it. I still team that's dangerous at points. I just think there's a potential – potential there's a potential that they just go scorch earth on the league and start hitting the crap out of people and that wheeler suarez and nola just go on a nice streak of like three weeks of just non-stop quality great starts i just i can see that i can but we'll have to see what happens and whatnot right um in terms of the rest of the podcast i mean that's kind of all i have to say here we are approaching a little bit of a danger zone with jay cronenworth 205, 305, 318 slash line on the year, batting average on base slugging. His first month, he had a 344 on base percentage in 22 games in April. And so far this year, 241. Uh, that's been the most concerning with me is the fact that he's still not hitting well yet. Uh, Jay Cronenworth, I am officially in the okay, like I think he's going to be better. I think that he's gotten maybe a tad bit unlucky, but. I have to admit, yeah, I mean, I talked about this before the season started, that it's like, this is why you like to have depth and options. Because what if Cronenworth just all of a sudden isn't any good anymore? Like, I, it's way too early to say that. I have not seen anything, just based on his freaking savant page, right, and expected batting average and all that stuff. Like, I, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Is he hurt? Maybe? I mean, it's, it's possible that Jay Cronenworth is hurt. But I have to say, out of all the Padres... You know, I've, I've been really dogging the fact that the first baseman, I don't think he's going to keep this up. I've been really dogging Trent Grisham for a lot of the season, right? Um, maybe I haven't been a little bit fair in my, not slander, but my criticisms of Jay Cronenworth, who really has not been uh, at all very good. And it's not just a couple weeks, right? It's not just a couple weeks whatsoever. It's been a while now. But even still, yeah, his expected batting average is actually quite low. But I will say when it comes to his walk, whiff, and chase rate, that part looks the same. So I'm going to give it another week, especially against this Phillies team, especially against some teams they have coming up. You know, they do have the Brewers coming up, so that'll be a little bit rough, right? But we are reaching the point where it's, huh, Jake Cronenworth, like, you need to wake up. This is this is becoming a little bit more of a, oh, man, is he going to decline type of moment, you know? I don't know. It is at least at the point where we start looking at that because, in fairness, he's been one of the best second basemen in all of baseball over the course of 2021 and 2020. So we shall see. We shall see. We shall see indeed. Sorry, everybody, for this little bit of all low kind of rambling uh, episode of Lockdown Padres, guys, but that's just what happens. But I promise you tomorrow's episode will be slightly more organized as I talk to Mr. Paul Francis Sullivan of the Locked On MLB podcast. Go check that out. He talks about baseball, both past and present. Really, really good stuff. It's going to be fun. Uh, we I haven't done a crossover with my man in so long. I think the last time I did a podcast with Sully was back when Joe Musgrove threw the no-hitter. So hopefully this will bring even more good luck for the Padres. That will be tomorrow's episode that you can look forward to. Should be a lot of fun. And then at the end of the week, going to recap the end of the series on prop. So that'll be Thursday. I'll be recapping the end of the series and what have you. Cause it's an early game. Uh, the six forty five start for me, by the way, on my Eastern coast time. Love that. love that so much for me. And it's actually a really early game on Thursday. So definitely going to save the, the, the last two games of the series going to be recapping those on Thursday. And then Friday going to be doing a crossover with Ben Caspic of locked on giants that I am uber, uber excited for. And I, I can't wait. I can't wait. It's going to be a lot of fun guys. 
But until then, that about does it for today's edition of Lockdown Padres Podcast, guys. The only pod that may be better than the Padres themselves. Remember to subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcast from. Follow me on Twitter at Javapeno, J-A-V-I-I-P-E-N-O, or at L-O underscore Padres on Twitter. And Lockdown Padres on YouTube, of course, to see my beautiful hair. I don't know. I'm feeling myself with the hair, let me tell you. Until next time, stay safe. And of course, stay faithful. My fire faithful homies, take care.